Hi, welcome to the Stitch TV show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show. <laughs> it is the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. In addition to our talk shows, we also post tutorial videos, virtual stitch-ins, and book clubs. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by our friends, QT Fabrics and Inmart. You can learn more about each of them in their links for this show's episode notes. So we got super cute little display I know. for Inmart thread. We did. So this is the Iris Ultra Cotton Thread, and it is also known as the No Hint of Lint. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that it was known as the No Hint of Lint. No Hint of Lint. Um, so, but yes, it's cotton thread. It's um, 60 weight, 50 weight, 50 weight. And it's three ply cotton thread. Yeah. So, and no lint, which is and really it super nice. Magically matches the quilt behind it. It does. Which also relates to the fabric that we brought from QT. Exactly. You know, we're still in love with Pixie Dots. I know. I don't care. It's been, I'm not came, tired of them. This came out of my stash. It I, will go back to my stash. I totally, you will see those in the future soon in something else. All of the futures in the multiverse? No, just in something else we're doing, you may see some Pixie Dots. <laughs> just saying. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about modern quilting and precision piecing, and we're joined by the modern layout version of the Fillmore quilt from our video class. So you can get an online course for this 12-block sampler quilt at learn.thestitchtvshow.com. So, <laughs> what did we just do? Uh, we just, um, this morning, we we bounced forward and it was rough. <laughs> we found, oh, yes. We did spring forward we spring in the time zones. In the time zones. Which everyone in the U.S., and I think many parts of the world, with the well, exception every, of there Indiana. Some, there are some states that are Arizona. against it, yeah. and I'm against, I like those states. I think I should be against it. And apparently my great-grandma, so, who just didn't do it, didn't. <laughs> just was no. So, no. yeah, we had a little time change. Uh, and the blessing and hazard of technology <laughs> is that half your devices update automatically and the other half don't. And, yeah. and now you're arguing with your stove. <laughs> <laughs> well, and no, I never argue with my stove. So, because I, I, I don't know that I'm really weird about changing my stove and my microwave and stuff. You know, because my is phone automatically changes. So I probably do have to change the one in my car, which yes. is the nightmare one. You know, it's... I did mine this, on the way over. Press this, hold this. I don't know. Anyway. So... I have an old school car. But what we did that you want us to talk about is QuiltCon. Yes. So... We did go to QuiltCon. We went to QuiltCon. Which also was in a different time zone. It was one <clears throat> hour off. <laughs> Still didn't like it. <laughs> but then I were earlier over there. It was. In Nashville. But we had a good time. Met, we did. Met some fans. We did. We met fans. We saw some quilts. The quilts were gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, we saw some uh, friends that were vending that we chatted with and stuff. Met some new friends. Met some new friends. Um, got yelled at. In, in a positive way. Multiple times. Ronnie. <laughs> Thank you. It was delightful. So glad we met you. <laughs> it's a little alarming. Because <laughs> there was a lot it. of ladies there, and we're like, I loved it. I loved it. So yeah, it was fun. Ronnie yelled at us down the hall, and um, you, came and grabbed me and drug yes. me down the hall. And as Pam followed, like, well, I did they, hesitate for a second. They're kidnapping like, Lynn. What are we gonna do? Do I run for help or do I follow? She followed. I followed. So we both <laughs> would have been kidnapped if this had been a scenario. Like Mission Impossible or something. I did love that, you know, we'd be. <laughs> so I was talking to a woman uh, that was sitting next to me because we were tired and we just sat down in the demo stage. Like, we're just going to sit down because we're tired and started <laughs> chatting with the woman next to me, yeah. who turns out is the social media coordinator for Rocket City Modern Quilt Guild, and, which is Huntsville, Alabama, because that's where Space Camp is. Yes, um, you talked about that. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and so I'm. And talked about some other things too. Well, that yeah. I didn't get well, we into were talking about potty training because yes. 
my kids have successfully gone through that. She is in the middle of that process. So I was giving her some raise hope. Sage, sage <laughs> advice. Yeah. Uh, and Lynn made an offhand comment like, oh, it's all fun until all this talk makes it on the YouTube show. <laughs> and, and the woman was like, <coughs> what? And so I hadn't mentioned the show until then, so I kind of told her about it. And then, like, right then, another viewer, like, <laughs> ran in. <laughs> so we're like, ran in. <laughs> I can't believe I said this. I was like, hold on, this happens a lot. <laughs> I couldn't believe she said it either. I was like, who are you? This does not happen a lot. It happens a lot when we go to quilt stuff, quilting events. It doesn't happen like when I'm at the grocery store. Yeah. We ain't that big a deal. No. (laughs) No. (laughs) And I, well, anyway, here's what I thought was interesting, that when people meet us, this is a common gesture. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. That's my thing to do when I'm trying not to cry. Like, they did that a lot. I was like... (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. Excitement. I'm, I'm normal. They were excited. And I was excited to meet people, too. So Just so I you guys know, like, A, we're real people. B, we both have legs. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was always, like, the weird newscaster myth of, like, maybe maybe they don't even have legs under that desk. <laughs> nope. People saw us stand. We have legs. We have legs. <laughs> we wear pants. Mine aren't outside real, the house. I'm, mine aren't real tall, so. Well, it's okay. Yeah. Just I mean, they work. Like, they reach the I'm floor. I'm shorter so. than people think. When they made me, oh, yes, you are short. Yep, I am. <laughs> Guess what? You're right. They make me sit on a cushion so I look taller on the set. We don't make you sit on a cushion. You okay. could not sit on a cushion. True. I could. Anyway, so we went to QuiltCon. We had a good time. Yes. And um, we are super excited because in two years, it will be in Atlanta. And that was very exciting. Now, caveat, we don't know what part of Atlanta let me just say, because Atlanta... We don't live in the entire city. We just live in one aspect. We are, like, northwest of the city. Right, yeah. And it, if Atlanta means the big convention center by the airport, that's oh. an hour away. <laughs> so, everyone... We're not as excited about that part. If it's if, if there. That's, yeah. So, we're it hoping. Be there. It's not going to be there. We're hoping. Downtown. It's, it's going to be downtown Atlanta. Uh, what's downtown? Or... Georgia World Congress Center? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you got to go inside the perimeter. Or uh, it's going to be in the Galleria. Yeah. Those are my guesses. Or it might be Gwinnett. I doubt where they it's hold Gwinnett. Yeah. Anyway, so. Uh, so we're arguing about where we don't know. We don't know. We will find out. Wild speculation. And let you know when we hear a year from now, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, but next year, 2020, it's in Austin. Yes. And we're going to try to go to that one. Um, of course, we, we're putting it on the schedule, so we'll see. Yes. We will not be driving. No. We have learned a lesson. Yes. <laughs> From driving. No, we Houston. did fine with the driving. We did we do just, fine. It was a long trip. Yeah. So, anyway. All right. So, what are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to start talking about modern quilting. Okay. Which is a great segue that so, we could have made less awkward. <laughs> but there you go. It's Welcome to our, the show. <laughs> I don't know what we do. How could that not be more awkward? Okay. All so, right, so modern quilting. Who started it? Um, actually, it was started by. Um, it kind of got its term from Denise Schmidt, who wrote a book. Um, I don't remember if she called it modern quilting or not, uh, but she was on the Martha Stewart show, and Martha Stewart said her quilts were fresh, and um, so, and she got a lot of attention, and it became a. I'm I'm doing this from memory. I'm not sure that I'm right on all the details, but so it became a kind of uh, online shared phenomenon when that happened. And so Denise Schmidt is kind of one of the first ones that is recognized as a, a modern quilter on a national stage. I'm not going to say she's a first modern quilter, right? But as a recognition on a national stage from the Martha Stewart show, yeah, yeah, she was. And I have heard different versions of who started. Um, I've also heard that it was started online with a group of people who were in Flickr groups, I think, and yeah. started sharing pictures of the quilts that they were doing and having conversations and community um, online talking about it. And so um, they all just said, hey, we should get together and show our quilts off and... 
all that kind of stuff. And I think that's where the kind of modern quilt guild was born. Yeah. Um, but that's been several years ago. I think it was, what, 2008-ish. Yeah. Yeah, around then. Yeah, and then the so. actual modern quilt guild started popping up 2009, 2010. Yeah. Originally, original chapter in Los Angeles, but then we started kind of others popping up, like the Atlanta quickly. one started in 2010. Yeah. I mean, it was quickly. It was an online movement. So it was kind of a, a grassroots movement of quilting, really, in a lot of ways. Um, they definitely uh, changed the landscape of quilting, I think, mm -hmm. from the standpoint of, you know, we saw more solids being produced because that was used by a lot of modern quilters. It was very attractive. Solids were. And so you see um, Why do you think those being is? more produced than they were prior. Why do you think that is? Because they are typically a lower cost fabric or because there is less risk in putting together solids or just because of the visual impact? Those are all good questions. And these are my opinions. <laughs> so let me make that clear. These are just one person's opinion. Um, I think that the low cost definitely had something to do with it because I think you look at the the quilters in that demographic were young families with kids, you know, generalization. Um, and so the cost of quilting is inexpensive. Y'all know it's expensive. So, you know, yes, I think that that. I also think that that generation was attracted to the mid-century modern aesthetic which is really kind of what you look at like when you look at some of those first modern quilts that kind of had that look and feel to them. There was also the sense of when it first started um, that modern quilts were to be used. Yes, very much utilitarian you, art is yes. kind of the descriptor for it. Right. And, you know, you can look at some of the traditional quilts have gotten into the definite level of art mm -hmm. that are not used at all. And I get that. Um, so I think that, you know, there's a, it wash, it's going to wash well, it's going to let, you know, those kinds of things. So I think part of it's the visual aesthetic because of mid-century modern influence on it. Um, I think the low cost of the fabric is definitely there with the solids. I also think that they weren't shopping in quilt stores. Yeah, I don't think they were. Um, as much as they were online. So, you know, I don't know that they saw the plethora of prints and stuff that were out there. You know, their online quilt stores have changed um, tremendously mm -hmm. in the past 10 years. So, I don't know. I think that could be it. What do you think? Do you think it was the money or do you think it was the visual design? It's probably both, I would guess. Yeah. Because broadcloth solids, I mean, you can find at big box stores. Right. Yeah. It's easy to get a hold of. Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering, too, you know, if the original design influence was mid-century modern because of clean lines. and But I feel like there's been an evolution more into, like, 70s era design. Oh, gosh, yes. Which, okay, is that still modern quilting then? Or did the definition change? Or is it just quilting and it's a particular type of aesthetic and we call it modern quilting because it's a blend of online community? I think that's a great question. I mean, we looked at the quilt. I mean, I love the quilts at QuiltCon. But I will say that some of the categories were very... Um, Fluid. yeah. Like, there were times that I was like, okay, what am I looking at? Minimalism or negative space? And that definition was a little tight. Like, as in, it was hard to see the difference in some of the the entries that mm -hmm. were entered. And not that there's anything wrong with it. This is not a criticism at all. It's just, that's a good, like, I just had to make sure, okay, wait, this was minimalism. And this is negative space. And those could be very similar aesthetic to look at. Mm -hmm. um, I I do. It was very different, I think, this year than two years ago when we were at Savannah. I don't know. I felt like the categories were more separated. 
Like you could see visually the difference in them. And this year it just seemed a little bit more blended. Well, I think this year the but categories were more definitions of techniques, whereas in Savannah they had categories called out for style of quilting. Like there was kind of like a statement quilt category, whereas this year in Nashville they, those were peppered throughout. I think that's a good point. And let's just say this as someone who's worked on quilt shows at the local guild level, you know, every time we have a show, there's a meeting what do we want our categories to be? Mm -hmm. And they get tweaked every year. Yeah. And the categories that get tweaked the most for our show, it's not modern quilting because that's just kind of one encompassing one, but it's the art and special technique categories. Those are the ones that get that get redefined almost every show. And I think part of it is, you know, it's hard to say this is all art. Mm -hmm. And have an abstract art next to a portrait that really yeah. looks a lot like a por person or whatever. Um, so, and it's hard to kind of compare those two and say this one's better. Yeah. Because um, they're two totally different skill sets. They really are. Um, I think Im improvisational piecing is difficult. It's a lot harder than people think it is. It really is. And to do it well. You've, to do it well. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it haphazard all you easily. want. Yeah. <laughs> but to do it well yeah. and to it have a statement, it definitely is a skill set. Yeah. And so. if you look, so we're filming in March. March is also National Quilting Month. Yay. It's National everybody Quilting should quilt. All the quilts this month. I was excited about that. Sorry. <laughs> I love it when she looks So if you follow like the that. hashtag IG Quilt Fest, you'll get, there's a monthly prompt being run by Amy Ellis. Okay. Um, where she's giving out daily prompts this month. And there is um, one around improv. And I think it's hashtag improv with Amy. So if you go on Instagram and look at that, you'll see examples of improv quilts in all varieties. Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I need to follow that. I'm not as big on following Tags. I need to be better at following tags. I follow people more than tags, I think. If you follow tags, you get a little more variety and you get I exposed think. to stuff outside of just That's a good idea. the same people you started following when you first started Instagram and now you have a very narrow world viewpoint. <laughs> I follow the tags I follow are like Salukis, so I see all the dogs. Uh, okay. <laughs> all the dogs. I started on the recommendation of a coworker who, like, knew that we had this show but didn't know the full extent of the pop culture references that we give. And this was when I was in San Francisco. She came to me and she's like, I feel like you would really enjoy this Instagram account. Okay, what is it? Neon Talk. And it is all, like, random 1980s pictures, videos, old oh, commercials. Yeah, we're going to oh. follow that. Where is <laughs> How did we not know about this? We will... <laughs> Oh, uh, man. Delightful. It's a lot of really big hair, a lot of neon, oh. like interesting architecture. So I thought it was funny. So <laughs> some friends of ours have been posting that the church group that they went to had an 80s prom. And they were like, we're going to 80s prom. And I, Mike and I are like, we were there. Like literally in the 80s. I had so. 90s prom. No, we, we almost our I'm prom theme bit older than was Pam. almost smells like teen spirit. <laughs> we voted that down, unfortunately, and instead we ended up with "Boys to Men." It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday, which is a song about death. So that was super peppy as well. Uh, it's good times. Proms in the '90s, the beginning of the grunge. <laughs> oh man, I can't. I'm gonna no. cough. Okay, <clears> modern quilting. Me. Bring it back. Okay, around. modern quilting. All right, so <laughs> I I just. I love modern quilting. I don't know. Do you do it? Uh, man, I thought I did, but I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I I think what I make tends I, to be more modern than what you make, oh, but God, still yeah. not modern enough to get in the show, <laughs> Yeah, which is fine. Neither one of us have gotten in the show. We've tried. I didn't uh, try this last year because I was like, I don't have anything I think is going to make it. And after seeing what was there, honestly. Yep. I don't have anything that's going to make it. So, I don't know. Nothing wrong with that. I, there's nothing. I, the style of quilts that I make are just not that not that uh, genre. 
So I don't think that I'm a modern quilter. See, I, I think you can be a modern quilter, but you don't necessarily make modern quilts. To there me, you go. That's what I am. I'm a modern quilter because modern quilter would say it's in made in today's time. Well, it it's uses gone. modern techniques. It right. takes advantage of modern tools uh, yes. and online resources available. And right. I would love to say, like, well, that's a new aspect. But then I think back of, like, no, back when quilting started, the a lot of what was attractive about quilting – was the fact that you're getting together and it is a community, a community aspect, and right. men didn't care about it because it was women's work, and so all the hens could get together and start clucking, <laughs> which may be what we do right now <laughs> online. <laughs> I don't like being compared to chickens. Just saying, I'm not a hen. Never like that. They have a lot of fine qualities, but birds in general kind of freak me out. So. <laughs> Like, they anyway, don't blink. What's up with that? I know. It's freaky. <laughs> it's like dolls. Did you like dolls as a kid? I was much more into My Little oh, Pony. I had three dolls. Freak me out. And they were all named after Gilligan's Island characters. There's that Geico <laughs> commercial out now where the people are sitting with all the dolls. I just have to turn it off. I'm like, yeah. I cannot handle that commercial. I did Stop find... it, Geico, please. All right. As much as I respected the display about Sherry Lynn Wood... At Quilt Con. Oh, no. She no. Had, she had embroidered some dolls. <laughs> no. I saw those from a distance. I'm like, I'm not going over there. She's like, I have to go take a picture. I said, I, I did. Don't care. I'm not going over there. Because my sister and I, neither one, were big no. doll fans. But oh, I had to take a picture. Cool. And I'm like, modern quilting's really changed. <laughs> Posted it in the family Facebook Post, group. I mean, from I didn't even look at them. And they were freaky looking. I'm not a doll fan. So, no. <laughs> And then, and then we had to meet close to. I was like, "Oh my god, the dolls are right there!" <laughs> Did not like the dolls. All right. Anyway, modern quilting. Modern quilting. <laughs> that was at the show, literally. Uh, so the other thing that modern quilting talks about is modern traditionalism, um, which reinterpreting classic and, classic blocks. Um, and that's playing with scale, playing with alternate grid work. Right, that kind of stuff. Um, I did like that winning quilt. Oh, it was a Robin Peter to pay Paul um, group quilt. Uh, You're talking about the best of show? Or no, something modern else? traditionalism, the one that won for oh, okay. modern traditionalism, was a Robin Peter to pay Paul pattern block that they blew up. Um, that was cool. Although I think it would be hard to see that that's what I think the original block was. I could be wrong. It could be an orange peel, too. But I think those are really similar. Do you have a picture of that that we could put in the yes, show Yes, I do. I have a picture of all the winning quilts. Well, we just need this particular one. We'll put but, in the blog post. <laughs> yes, I do have that one. <laughs> Please don't send them all. I won't be able to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Which speaks to our earlier point. Um, and then I like the improv piecing, um, and I thought there were some really good improv piecing one. The best of show was improv piece group quilt, uh, very bright. It was made with all solids. Um, not my favorite quilt of the show though, honestly, but it was, it was beautiful quilt. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What I found fascinating is so many more of the quilts that were hanging had facing instead of binding. Mm. Yes, it did, and I loved that. Yeah, and so facing is when you're doing, is it, you start with like a three-inch wide strip or so, and you fold it in half and press it like you would normally with binding, and you stitch it to the front of your quilt, but then you press it so it's all entirely on the back, and so there is no frame right? like and a traditional like binding that. would get. I it's like much that. more of... Uh, you see that much more in art quilts. Yes, you do. Um, so to me, that is a statement that it is meant to be hung on the wall. Because I don't know that you would face a quilt that you would use on the so, couch. So then the question goes back to, is this a utilitarian quilt? I would say mm -hmm. that the best of show quilt from QuiltCon this year is not because it would only keep a small dog warm. <laughs> That's true. It wasn't a big quilt. That's very true. It was not a big quilt. It was probably, I don't know, maybe 45, 50 by 36. 36. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't a big quilt at all. Um, but, but 
You know, fate, when we talk about facing, it just reminds me, in some of the vintage, antique, old quilts, they would face the front of the quilt at the top mm -hmm. um, to prevent the men's beards from uh, damaging the fibers on the quilt. <laughs> Which I'm like, it's kind of appropriate today. Maybe we should be doing that. There's a lot of men with beards now. Well, I think Just a lot saying. of bed quilts, too, you see borders on only three sides. True. Because you don't need a border at the top. That's where you the know, pillows are. Yeah. That's true in the old quilts, too. Yeah. That's yeah. what I just said. Um, but, no, what I was <laughs> cool. thinking was. Cool. <laughs> why did she do this thing? Anyway, but what I was thinking was also in some of the older quilts, they will cut out the um, corners. Oh, yeah, so they lay kind of flat. So they lay... They would have poster beds, yeah. so the corners would be cut so that it could lay around the poster bed. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. All right, modern quilts. Anything else? I mean, this is only a very superficial discussion about oh, how gosh, different. Yeah. So, like, specific techniques. There's a ton of resources out there. So, the Modern Quilt Guild, like, master site has a definition of what modern quilting is. Uh, and I would definitely look there if you want specific guidelines around their definition of modern quilting. And I know that there's... I think that's changed, too, because I was yeah. trying to look it up today just to make sure. I don't think it read the same way. I'd have to go back and compare. Yeah. But I don't think it read the same way. But you can look at um, Modern Quilt Studio with Bill Kerr and Weeks Ringel. Oh, like and yeah, their they're aesthetic. awesome. Yeah. I love their aesthetic. So, yes. yeah, a couple different resources to check out. Definitely. But... So now we're going to take a closer look at the Fillmore quilt, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. So now we're going to discuss, in a very awkward way of transitioning, because we want to keep it real, um, precision piecing. Cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you know about precision piecing? I know that it is hard. And there is a magical formula that okay. varies by person. <laughs> and then if you want to end up with a block that measures 12 inches inside the quilt when it's finished, <laughs> that you can jack it up in so many ways. <laughs> so many ways. So many ways. So many ways. Yes, that's true. I think... <laughs> Major first problem. <laughs> I think precision piecing, um, for me, is just a goal that I continually strive to attain. Yes. And sometimes I get it, and I'm like, yes, this is perfect. And sometimes I'm like, what did I do? Because it is nowhere yeah. close. And I swear to you, I did the exact same thing I did on the previous block. And what happened? I don't know. Well, in precision piecing can be a bit of a misnomer because it's not just piecing that'll mess you up. It's cutting. It's pressing. It's yes. yeah, all of all, all of the, the components, things. fabric selection, thread pinning. selection. Yes. Oh, pinning! I ain't got time for that. Well, there's the reason maybe precision is not in your game. <laughs> this quilt is still big enough to keep someone warm. <laughs> And half the blocks are improv, so, you know, ta -da. Ta -da. But they still needed to end up 12-inch finished. Yeah, that's true. It's, I mean, it's all a, it's definitely part, if you're not cutting right, you're right off the bat got issues. So, well, we are going to discuss some techniques. There is an awesome book called Mastering Precision Piecing. It I actually have that book. Sally Collins. Well, I think you got that book at the same place I got that book when we took that class together about precision piecing. Yes, I did. I, did we take it together? I think so. I did it through the Modern Guild. Well, I heard about it through the Modern Guild, but it was held in the basement of a quilt shop. Yes, it was, but I don't think I took it with you. I took it later. Yes, yes. I was there with part of our production staff. Mm. I finished my thing. I didn't take it with you. I took it with She you. did not. <laughs> um, and okay. let's ask you if we're surprised that you finished yours. No. No. Well, I made it out of Christmas fabric, so it's the little Christmas thing that hangs in my dining It was room. a feathered star, mm -hmm. wasn't it? It yeah. was. Which is okay. a very hard block if you want to get good at them. So, 
Let okay. us start with tips from the beginning of the process. Okay, cutting. What's your tip? No, I would go earlier than that. Ironing. Ironing or pressing? Because already right off the bat. Ironing is doing this thing, like a two-year-old trying to help clean the table. No, they just do straight arm. Sorry. Sorry, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Pressing. Press. Press. Okay, but I iron my fabric before I cut it. Now, do you use steam? Uh, depends on how bad it's wrinkled when do I'm you taking do, it do off the bowl. Do you use starch or sizing or I something? don't norm. No, I don't normally. Hmm. Um, a lot of people do, and a lot of people believe in that. I don't normally do that. I would say if you are going to use starch or sizing or best press or whatever, you want to be a lot more cognizant of pressing instead of ironing because ironing can skew the fabric. And so while you may have a very stiff piece of fabric now that's not going to shift, it's kind of permanently in the wonky, <laughs> wonky press state. So then the next time you go to... Well, I don't find that I get the wonky press state when I'm doing a half a yard at a time or a yard at a time, which is when I'm talking about ironing mm -hmm. because I'm taking it off the bolt, ironing it to make sure that it's at least flat and not all crinkled up, you know, before yes. I cut it. So I don't, I don't tend to use best press steam or, well, steam, but not best press or any of the sizing starches until I've actually cut and sewn some stuff. Then I'll okay. do that. So step one, unwrinkle your fabric Unri yeah, off the and, bolt. And I don't think that that's bad for ironing. I don't think that that's a, uh, I don't think that'll give you Your mileage may stuff. vary. Again, two yes. different experiences here. Yeah. So you have a problem with that? I have. It depends okay. on how uh, my emotional state the day that I am ironing and like if I'm feeling some angst. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't screen cap that, please. <laughs> <laughs> that totally was not a good face. Because this is the face I went like, huh? Okay. Okay. So I get that. All okay. Right. So fabric is prepped. It is now time to cut. How many layers are you cutting at one time? All of the layers. None of the layers? One All layer? All of them. I don't cut. I normally just cut two, honestly. But I will go up as high as six, but not more than six. Agreed. I feel like I passed that test. No, I mean, it's just similar things. No, um, but, I, but nine times out of ten, I'm only cutting two. Because it's the fabric's turned over and I'm cutting a yeah. line. Well, I mean, it then, depends on the pattern. If it's yeah. a very scrappy pattern, I'm probably going to be doing six at a time because I'm going to have a bunch of pieces to cut out. If it's... A block of the month, like the Fillmore quilt behind us, you're or if cutting it's, one at a time. Yeah, you're cutting yeah one or two at a time. Right. So it it depends. Yeah, it depends on the pattern. Depends on what I'm doing. Do you use the same ruler all the time for everything? Oh, the same few. Yes. Yes. Um, I have a couple of favorite that I use a lot. My favorite for cutting off the bolt is an eight and a half by what is it twenty four. That's pretty standard, yeah. Yeah, it's a standard ruler. And then my other favorite is an eight and a half by, is it 14? Probably. Yeah. Mine's a six by 14 and a six by 24. Yeah. It's it's an eight and a half. I, I, I have the six, but I don't like it as well. The eight and a half gives me more. So eight Are they and the half same by 14. manufacturer? Uh, yeah, they are, actually. Now, when you put the ruler on the fabric... Where does the line on the ruler fall in relation to the edge of the fabric? You kiss it right on the edge. The top edge or the bottom edge? Okay, if I'm lining up, this is my line, I'm kissing the fabric to the edge of the line on the side that I'm going to cut on. Okay. If you did it, if you oh, moved well, it. Oh, well, no, it's this way, actually. So I kiss it to this edge of the line because okay. I'm cutting this way. For you, it would be this way and you're right. cutting Because I'm left-handed. And and I go over all a lot of these tips in the film art class, actually. Cool. Pretty extensively. But, okay. but I kiss it. So as long now, as you're there consistent. there are some people who say it needs to be right in the middle of that yeah, line. Yeah, centered. But I'm like. How can you see it? Yeah, you can't see it. So I just try to kiss it. And what's nice is, and some of the lines that I try to use, 
and not all of them will do this way. Some of them are solid and some are dotted. Yeah. Um, so it's easier to see that you're, you know, where you are in that line. Okay. Now, how are you holding your rotary cutter? Is your hand like this, like this, like... Well, it depends on which rotary cutter. If you use a Martelli rotary cutter, your hand's like this. Yes, and your blade is straight up and down against the edge of the ruler. Right. If you're not using an ergonomic cutter, more of like the straight handle. Right. Depends on how you're cutting. Like if you're leaning over something, you can, your, the angle of the rotary cutter can influence by a couple threads. Yeah, that's true. So, straight consistency up. is the key. Straight up. Straight, straight up. Straight, straight. Straight, straight, keep it straight. Yep, that's what I do. Cool. Yeah, and be confident when you're cutting. I think that just comes with time, but I've noticed when I've taught people how to cut for the first time, there's a, um, a tendency to be not pressed. They either don't want to press down or they press too hard. So there's a sweet spot there, but just be confident that, and not be like, oh, I'm going to mess up. Because as soon as you're like, oh, I'm going to mess up, you're doing this and you will. So it's, you know, and I'm very, it's very important to me that you have part of your hand on the ruler mm -hmm. and part of your hand off the ruler. Yes. So you Whether can it's kind one of... or two fingers. Yeah. Um, and if it's a long piece, you want to move your hand up. Yeah. So that it's. Because if you just keep it down here and you're cutting a long piece, it's real easy to it's turn twist. that. And, yeah, it'll go wonky. So, yes. How often... <laughs> I, this whole thing feels like it's turning into a quiz. It's not it meant is. to. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to get this wrong. <laughs> but I'm going to be confident in my cutting. Okay. Um, I'm ready. How often do you check to see that your cut line on like a folded piece of fabric off the bolt is still straight and hasn't like shifted a little bit. Mm. Like every three cuts, every six cuts. Oh, well, I'm kind of always after the next checking quilt. it. I uh, know. I'm kind of always checking it because yeah. I'm always relining up. I'll but do you line it. up against the fold of the fabric or against the selvage edge of the fabric? Fold. Yeah, me too. Fold will give you a straight line. Yeah, because otherwise you could right. maybe get a V. And I promise you... Um, you want to, it doesn't matter how great you are, you may want to true up every once in a while. Yeah. Especially if you're cutting a lot of strips and you've moved the fabric down. You know, it's real easy to move that ruler just a hair and just a hair and just a hair. And then three times of moving it just a hair, it's going to be a diagonal line and not as straight as you want it. So flip it over and true it up again before you flip it back to cut. Which won't make sense, but I'm serious. I go over this pretty method. My husband was like, I know how to cut now <laughs> after watching all the shows. <laughs> um, okay, so have you ever, like, ripped the fabric to get a starting line? Absolutely. Yep. And there are certain fabrics, um, I think it's it's important that you rip it, and those are wide backs. Oh, yeah, because those, that's 108-inch width that. Yes. And I used, so I came over. To Lynn's house yesterday and quilted my Bonnie Hunter Good Fortune quilt because it was like queen size. And she I, had this pretty wide back too. Yeah, well, the wide back. Was <laughs> it straight? See, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. They cut it. They didn't rip yeah. it. I, I I mean, I will tell you that there are certain quilt stores that you can go buy fabric fun and they will rip the fabric. They will not cut. They rip. Um, Mary Jo's in... Um, North Carolina yeah. does that. They do not cut. Um, that does, for that small of a piece, it does stress the edges of the fabric. Um, so you want to trim off about a quarter inch. Yeah, and sometimes more depending on how loosely woven yeah. the fabric is. Um, so different manufacturers could be different. Um, but that being said, I would never put a wide back on a long arm that I didn't have a ripped edge that I knew was straight. So I I didn't rip it, but I loaded it so that the selvage edge oh, was okay. attached to the leader. So it didn't bother you because it, it was wide It didn't because enough. I knew that I had a three-yard cut and right. that I was going to get at least 95 inches, <laughs> depending on how I will tell you got. that ripping fabric can influence the stress of the fabric 
up to four inches inside that rib, right? For So from the rib up to four inches in, you can see the warp and the weft of the fabric being skewed some. Mm -hmm. um, now, how you could go about that is you could take it back to the ironing board and try to unstress it and put it back into place, but it'll never go back Give to the same. Give it a spa day. Yeah. <laughs> it'll massage. never go back to, you know, the, but up to four inches, like hand width is what you can see it. Um, so, yeah. So we haven't even sewn anything yet. Yeah, no. We've talked about this for a long time. <laughs> we maybe need to do precision piecing on the next show, too, because I'm just saying, this is just cutting, you know, and just all the things that have to do with cutting. Okay. Yeah. Cutting and measuring. All right. So let's say we actually got some stuff cut. All right. We're ready to go to the sewing machine. Okay. Oh, here we go. <laughs> do you pin? So, Oh, God, no. <laughs> so the myth of the personal quarter inch. Or the scant quarter inch. Because if I measure my fabric by the middle of the line on the ruler, that means that my piece of fabric is going to be a thread bigger than your piece of fabric. Right, because I kiss it. And so because I have a slightly bigger piece of fabric, but we both want to end up with a four patch that finishes at four inches, then my quarter inch is going to need to be a little bigger than yours by one thread. Well... And you sew on a different sewing machine, and you have a different foot than the foot that I use. Mm -hmm. um, okay, here's how you figure that out. Go cut three strips that are two and a half inches a piece. Sew them together. One, two, three. Right? Mm -hmm. Measure the middle strip. Does it measure two inches? If it does... You've Good job. got a you've got a quarter inch seam on both sides. If it doesn't measure two inches, backtrack and see what you're doing wrong. So that's your test. And when you can do that consistently, then you've got your own quarter inch figured out. But it is something you have to. I mean, everybody's different because every machine's different, every foot's different. The th thickness of the thread will affect it. Um, your cutting affects it, and your pressing affects it. So that's how you tell. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the very first thing I teach my beginner students is sew those three strips together, and then let's just keep working on. And then adjusting, and there's lots of tools that you can buy. You can put painter's tape down the edge, you know, to measure the quarter inch. On the bed of the sewing machine. On the bed, yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. like just randomly. Just put, it, just put tape Good. down. It'll be fun. <laughs> so that, I mean, that's how you tell. Mm -hmm. And everybody just needs to, it's practice. It's total it practice. Well, practice and figuring out like, oh, well, if I, if you buy a new brand of ruler or if you change your rotary cuts, cutter style when you go from like a straight to an ergonomic or vice versa or piecing a quilt that requires a lot of precision but then you take it to a retreat and use a travel machine like that can... I, I started to say do you see that because like I use the same brand on my home machine as I do my travel machine so the quarter inch foot is the same so I'm used to looking in a specific spot I got that but you use a featherweight mm -hmm. as your travel. Do you, do you have to look different places, or is it is it just rote now that you just have done it so much? So I have a different style foot. My, the foot on my regular Janome has the guide on it, so it's like a little black metal thing on the edge of the foot, so I butt, butt the fabric up against that. And so I know the needle position that I need to be at for center to hit a scant quarter inch with that foot is a needle position of 4.2. <laughs> All right. See, but you figured that out. I figured that and out. And if you just sit down and start sewing, like if I just sat down at your machine and started sewing, I would have to figure that out mm. without your without you telling me. No, but that's the default setting. Like when you oh, turn it on, because okay. I programmed, I'm like, please put it at 4.2. Well, not every is programmed. Right. Right. Yeah. But on the featherweight, because that is not an adjustable needle position, like it's pretty consistent. And the foot that I have on is actually one I got from the singer I got when I graduated high school. Oh, really? That I like. And it's, it is a little, 
It's not great when I have to hit a diagonal piece because the foot close to the needle is a quarter inch, but it's got like a diagonal slice in it. And then there, if I went by the front of the foot, it would be an eighth of an inch. But because of that little diagonal slice, sometimes it catches fabric. Like if I'm sewing half square triangle units to right. each other, it'll yeah. like flip that seam allowance down. So, but it's something that I've gotten used to and I'm aware of. Right. So that, I don't think I could sit down at that machine and know... And sew the quarter inch the same way you do. I would have to figure it out. So don't be discouraged. The whole reason I'm saying this is don't be discouraged. You've got a sewing machine. It's your sewing machine. Play with it. And just keep measuring until you go, okay, this is it. If you figured out what that is, then one of the tips is take um, painter's tape, which I have some over here, but I may get killed for pulling it out. So take painter's tape and then put it on the edge of your machine so that when you butt the fabric up next to it, then that's where your quarter inch will be. And that's one that's not gonna hurt your machine and it's not gonna hurt your, you know. So, yep, quarter inch. Yep. Very important, key. Any block pressing tips? A lot of people press open. I usually press the dark, um, but the key is let the iron open the seam and not let the nose of the iron open the seam. That's, that's how I'm going to say it. I don't know that there's better description without showing you. Yeah. So what do okay. you do? I tend, I tend to press to nest. So right. as seams alternate, Yes, um, I do too. Yeah, which right. is a lot of what happens when I'm trying to spin seams, and we've got a video on that. I will, right, right now, there will be a little eye. Click on that. You'll get to it. Um, on spinning quilt seams and what nesting means and right. creating your block so all the seams nest and spin the same way so you can sew them together and not have a weird bulky spot. When we were, when I was doing this class, I spent time talking about, okay, you, you want to press to the dark this way, and then in this row, press this way so that these seams nest. So, yeah, and, and really good patterns will show you which way to press mm -hmm. for blocks. So that's always helpful. Yeah. So, yeah. There's a lot to precision piecing, hence the book. Yes. <laughs> and that's not her only book. She's written a yeah. few others. So um, Sally Collins, I think, is the gold standard of precision piecing. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of other tips, too. So For sure. So when it comes to precision, sometimes you just need to make a swag, a stitching wild-ass gas. So let us know your best, worst swag. Leave a comment on our blog or the YouTube episode <laughs> or in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches. And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by Inmart and QT Fabrics. You can find links to these wonderful companies in the show notes for today's episode. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for helping produce this stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell to turn on notifications on YouTube. Our next virtual stitch is Friday, April 12th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, live on our YouTube channel. And our next book club episode is March 22nd. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase fan gear, quilt patterns, video classes. Tune in next time for more Quilting Chat with Friends. 